Hello everyone, welcome to another Autogefühl episode. Today we are looking at the premium van segment. We have recently presented to the, you the BMW Active Tourer as well as the Golf Sports Van. Now the third premium van follows, the Mercedes B-Class with the facelift. Actually, it was the Mercedes B-Class that founded this segment and now it has to watch out for new competitors. Today we will look what is new with this facelift. I can tell you, a short update is with the engines and the interior. This new facelift aims to resharpen the car and to position it newly. So we will look how this worked. The stronger SUVs became, it seemed compact vans grew less important. But still, compact vans are for families very convincing because they're just so flexible. So the premium manufacturers set sales towards the compact van segment, seeking those family customers and mature customers who can afford to buy premium and love just this flexibility. Hardly anyone knows it, but with over 3,000 registrations per month in Germany, the B-Class is the second most important model for Mercedes, right after the C-Class, being sold even a little more than the E-Class or the A-Class. I mean, come on, look at this car, it's just not so emotional. That's why people don't have this urgent desire to buy it, but you can just do so much with this car, we're going to show it to you, because of the flexibility. Now let's take a look at the prices, taking our home country Germany as an example. The Golf Sports one starts at 20,000 euros there. The BMW Active Tourer and the Mercedes B-Class, they cost 27,000 euros. That's a difference of 7,000 euros. This is a challenge for BMW as well as Mercedes because the Golf Sportsman already is a premium car. We've checked that one out, so have a look at our video. I'm gonna link to it in the video description. And I would like to know from you, you have seen all our videos. If you haven't do so, please do so. And tell me, which one do you like best? Please write it into the comments. I'm gonna read what you write. What you can see when you first look at the Mercedes B-Class in comparison to all other vans or premium vans, this is a design product. But with this facelift, not so much has changed. You can see you have a new bumper at the front, you have slightly larger side vans and the LED daytime running lights have moved into the headlights to form one unit. We are looking at the AMG line today, so if you want to spice up your van, this is your line. For example, you have a slightly curved bumper here, larger side vans and a stronger looking grille here at the front. We also have the night line in this model, which means you have a lot of dark black elements. For example, the shiny 18 inch alloys and those fancy side mirror caps, as well as a privacy glass in the rear. From the technical side, the AMG line offers a lower suspension to have a directer connection to the road. 
and the AMG line also offered those fake exhaust pipes here in the rear to give it a whole new sporty touch. In the interior, the main changes in the new B-Class concern the new trim levels. We of course have the AMG line here, but you can also have the style or the urban trim level and they each have individual details. When you are in this cockpit, you immediately notice this Mercedes design. It's all well thought. And you notice what Mercedes called central purity. Those hidden design lines because you have those overlapping elements and you don't notice the gaps between those individual elements. This is something I like very much and this also gives you this premium feel and that's just done by the design. What you notice immediately in the interior is the multimedia system. Here you have the overview over your car and you have the navigation system, the radio, media, telephone connection or you can get to know something about your car for example. We're gonna have a look at what you can see here. You can have something about the lightning, the ambient lightning, you have 12 colors of ambient light. Here you can choose the color which you like best. Let's see what we've got there. Let's take the pink one. But it doesn't really go with the red, Jupiter red exterior color. Ooh, red. Let's take the red one. It's too light, bright outside now to really see it. And we can go back. Let's look at the navigation system. I think the screen is really clear. What you notice in this AMG line is the sporty steering wheel. You have those red contrast stitches here that go very well with our exterior color and this perforated structure right here. I mean, you might wonder what has an AMG line to do with a B-Class with such a, a little bit boring car. We have to say but i mean this is a way you can definitely tune up your family car giving it a very sporty touch so if you have a big family and you like this car because it's good for your family and you just can't buy that sport car you really want this is the way to go and i mean here at least you have the feel of a sport car with your steering wheel of course the steering isn't as direct as it would be in a real sports car. Sorry guys. So let's have a look at the seating position. Very important for the driver. So the seats here, you notice immediately you have an upright seating position. When um, you sit here, for me it feels a little bit hard, but that's of course because of the AMG line. What I like is the soft seating pad. That's very good. You have side support here and also a very good support for your head. For me, the seat is a little bit too short as I'm, I'm a very tall person of over 180 meters. This part here could be a little bit longer. I would wish for an extendable seat, but that's not the case here, so we have to arrange with this. Now let's look at the seating position in the back. What you notice immediately that there is enough space even for a tall adult to sit in the back. For example, this seat in the front is way back, but there's still enough space for my legs. And you have lots of space also above your head. And when you look outside, you can even see the panoramic roof. This is a quite a nice feature for people sitting in the back because you can actually see more, but this is a split panoramic roof. I think there are better solutions. 
you could for example only have a small distraction here what you also have as a feature what I find quite interesting is that you can move the bench you have the split bench here and we have moved this seat to the front so you can see what you can do and we can also move the whole bench I am sitting on so you have more space in the trunk to flip the seats you pull the string here and it moves quite easily however it would be nice if you could also flip the seat right directly from the trunk side but you can still see there is enough space for what you need when you go on vacation with your family or just for the weekly shopping spree if you need more space we have shown you you can move the benches you can flip the seats you have this to hide your valuables and what is extremely important for people loading this car is that you have a very low loading cell you don't have to lift the stuff you can just smoothly slide it in but be careful don't scratch those very nicely done shiny surfaces now let's close the trunk i'm gonna see how it works when I have something to carry in my hand, I only have one hand, for example, and I want to close it. This is quite hard for me to do, actually. Ooh, I have to go to the fitness center more often, I think. If you're curious about the size of the car, the length stays at 4 meters 35, the width at about 180. The long wheelbase of 2.7 meters is one indicator from the outside where you can see how much space you actually have inside the car now let's have a look under the hood and because you asked us also to review more petrol engines we have chosen for you the b220 2 liter petrol engine with 184 horsepower this is quite a powerful engine it's very strong and agile in the city but what we noticed while driving through the city we already had a consumption of 10 liters and that's a little bit much so to sum it up you can say it's strong it's powerful it's really fun to drive as far as it goes in the segment but the consumption is too high besides this one we also have a smaller petrol engine available and two diesels one at 1.5 liter and a 2.2 liter version each of them has two horsepower variants Hello also from my side, from Thomas. I hope you have enjoyed the, uh, our review from Katrina so far. Now I'm going to tell you more about driving the Mercedes B-Class facelift. First of all, well, this is really a facelift here now. Um, it's a relatively old car in general, I must say. And the Volkswagen Golf Sportsman and the BMW 2 Series Active Tour, well, they are completely new cars. So it's really a hard competition here. However, just from the styling, especially here in the AMG package, it looks really great. And I must say, just from the basic outlook, this is maybe the favorite under these three premium compact vans. So about driving, well, it is definitely not a sporty car, even if it looks sporty here in the AMG line. We are riding some very competitive curves here now and um, well it is a bit understeering of course even if we have the four-wheel drive and then the steering wheel needs very long steering ways so it doesn't happen a lot when you turn for example right now you have to really go all the way and that's not something you would call direct steering also from the suspension well the main purpose is to be comfortable and this purpose is really fulfilled it's such a great comfortable ride and especially if you're driving for example with four adults that also makes sense um, if you're going a more sportier way well the suspension doesn't really fit to that because then it's shaking too much but in my opinion this car does not have to be sporty it should fulfill the purpose of a great travel car also for a lot of people and um, 
also for, for the baggage you have. So even if it's this family van, you know, I would have preferred a little bit director steering, especially here in the AMG line. It is supposed to be a little bit more direct here in the AMG line. I haven't tested a non-AMG line, but I will do that later, but still. It could a little bit be more progressive than it would be more pleasing even if you're going left and right and left and right. In general, you have a very good overview to the front, so it's also very good for traveling, especially. For example, here now we're going to a narrow city road here, medieval style, and that's very beautiful because you can see everything that lies in front of you. Also, the view to the back and just around. I think it's very cleverly done because you have windows kind of everywhere in your impression and so you have a very good overview of the whole car even if it's not the shortest car. So on the basic riding impression I'm very relaxed and I would have no problem to go on a long journey with this car. I wouldn't pick it for a sporty ride of course but in general I can recommend it for a very flexible usage and also for the trips with your family. By the way, I'm a very big fan of the reverse cameras from Mercedes. I think they have the best resolution in all the automotive industry. Look at just how clear the image is. And also, we have different functions. For example, this one is the central camera now and I can see where the car ends and also see all the surrounding here and then I can switch to the other mode you see it here at the trash bin how the angle changes see here it's hard to see now I can put the wider angle that's good when you for example going uh, reverse and then have to check the sides as well if maybe people or some other cars are approaching and then especially good for night rides you can also adjust the gamma brighter and darker depending on the light situation outside so that's really very well done and I can also show you when we are so I'm going in front now I'm putting reverse gear then it gets activated and if I turn the steering wheel it shows me where I'm actually going and so it's very easy to steer the car even if you are not turning your head This is a new Mercedes C-Class. Well, obviously it's not a real new Mercedes C-Class. This is a balloon test car and this will help us to show you how the new Mercedes B-Class has new assistance system and we're gonna test it here, for example, when we drive after this balloon car, how we can break down automatically. The next exercise here with the Collision Prevention Assist Plus, as it is called now, is we got a static barrier and we're going there with 30 kilometers an hour and we're just doing nothing then. We try to be, um, you know, we, we don't pay attention to the traffic. I just hold the steering wheel tight, but I don't steer and I don't go on the brakes and then we see if the car breaks down automatically. This assistance system comes with serial production, so it's included in every B-Class and Mercedes hopes to reduce accidents with that one even further. So now I'm doing nothing. Okay, we got the manual transmission. So the engine got out now, but it's no problem. You see, we didn't touch the barrier. It was very close, but I just kept um, my foot on the throttle. I didn't lift it, but I didn't press the brake, didn't press the clutch, and I did nothing on the steering wheel. And still, for example, if I would have looked to the right or left, something distracted me, this accident would have been prevented here now. It's a very impressive system, especially because it comes with sea reproduction. And I'm always a fan of it when this assistance systems directly come with every car because then everyone can profit from it. And now we're trying the same with the moving object. We got this balloon car in front of us now and um, we are driving too close to the balloon car and then we see if the car breaks itself. So we will drive about 40 kilometers now. 
just staying on the throttle, do nothing on the steering wheel, do nothing on the brakes. Whoa. You see my, my belt got tighter and it braked itself. So if I wa didn't pay any attention now, this would even have prevented that I went on that car now. So it's, um, I would say, the test worked. And uh, the speed difference can uh, actually be up to 40 kilometers an hour. It's the same with the static objects. If a car is standing still, then you can also prevent the accident if you're going 40 kilometers an hour. It can totally be prevented. If you're going any further, then it at least can um, mitigate the, um, the impact of the accident, at least. We are here now with Frank from Messias, and he is the expert on the CPA so as the abbreviation for this assistance system and um, I wonder what is Mercedes expecting how can accident be prevented in when you're uh, thinking of figures now in accident? Well, um, we found out that around about 14% of rear accidents were avoided when we brought the warning to the B-Class. Now we offer our customers a warning and if they are not paying attention, we offer them a help, an autonomous braking. And we expect that if every car would have a collision prevention assist plus, we could avoid 30%. So but it, it will have, it's from serial production, this This collision. is from serial production. You drove it, it has a, had a manual gearbox, so in every B-Class we have this beautiful sensor which can warn and which can break autonomously and help you to avoid crashes. Will you uh, f further have it um, adapted to other models now, not only the B-Class, also other Mercedes models? Well, if you buy only a Mercedes without any um, driver assistance systems, you will have this from the B-Class, C-Class, E-Class to the S-Class. But you can buy in, from the C-Class to the S-Class, you can buy Intelligent Drive, our very famous driver assistance system that has a little more performance. Does the system already work with pedestrians? No, this is a radar-based system, so we cannot detect um, pedestrian. But this is possible if you use our super system, the Intelligent Drive, offered from the C-Class to the S-Class, but then it is an extra option. This can, with this stereo camera, can detect pedestrian, yes. Okay. Can you maybe um, also show us where is the sensor actually? Because usually um, for the, also the adaptive cruise and cruise controls, we see a shiny black element in the front of here, but I can't see anything here now. No, we do not have it behind the star. We put the sensor behind the bumper in the foam. We put this sensor, which is serial, and um, offer the performance from the right part of the bumper. There the sensor is situated and can be used for this safety functionality. Mercedes B-Class is a multi-purpose car that is very versatile and that's why it's very popular amongst its friends. People who buy this car like this because they either have a family or they are of mature age and have bigger things to transport. If you're thinking about buying a premium van and you're deciding between the BMW or the Mercedes it's a brand philosophy. Buy that one that you like more and that brand you feel more accustomed and more drawn towards too. If you're deciding between the Golf Sportsman and 
this car, it's definitely a question of the price. Because the Golf Sportsman also has the, most of the features this car offers, but at a quite lower price. So you might want to look into that one closer as well and compare what you like best. We have to say for us in the premium van segment, this car clearly is the design winner because it doesn't only have this versatile feature, but also offers a very stylish option. The B-Class is also available as an electric. In the US, our friends will only get the electric version. And we're going to link to that review in the video description.